Last week I produced a video critiquing Sabina Hossenfelder's uh, Defence of Capitalism. In that video I produced some data showing that in fact the socialist economy of the USSR performed very well compared to the capitalist economy of the United Kingdom. People raised a couple of reasonable objections to that. One was that the USSR was undergoing initial industrialization, whereas the UK was already industrial, and it's easier to have rapid growth when you're undergoing initial industrialization. The second argument, the second objection, was that I should have given per capita data for the USSR and the UK, not gross uh, national income, because that doesn't account for the USSR having a larger population. Now, why did I choose Britain? Well, Britain was the first industrial capitalist economy, and in 1928, Britain, or the British state, was the dominant world power. It, it's not easy to grasp that now, but that was the case 100 years ago. In terms of population and area controlled by the state, it was bigger than any other state. That shows the British Empire in the 1920s. Now, there were four economically significant countries in the British Empire. The United Kingdom, India, Canada and Australia. And these represented not only the major economies in terms of GDP, but the major land area and major population of the empire. And taken as a whole, the, the economic core of the British Empire was roughly twice as big as the USSR. It had a population, the, the big four had a population of 390 million. The USSR at the same time had a population of 69 million. So a bit, bit over twice the size. So what did the USSR, which w had recently taken over the Russian Empire, the Bolsheviks had recently established communist government in the territory of the old Russian Empire. What did that have in common with the British Empire, which had been its main rival in imperialist days? They both had huge populations. They both had huge land areas. They had ample natural resources. And in both cases, a large share of the population were peasants. The majority of the British Empire population were peasants, the majority of the Soviet population, which continued from the Russian Empire, were peasants. So which did a better job of raising living standards? The socialist planned economy or capitalism? Well, it's pretty clear. If we look at the period before Indian independence, in 1928, when the socialist planned economy was introduced in the Soviet Union, the per capita GDP of the British Empire was slightly above the per capita GDP of the USSR. And given that the population of the British Empire was more than twice that of the USSR, it was obviously much more significant in terms of gross production. 20 years later, the GDP of the per capita of the USSR was well ahead. Now, in both cases, you have empires, or what was an empire what, and what still was an empire, with large areas, large populations, starting out predominantly peasant, USSR is well ahead. It's no wonder that by the time of independence in India, Communism was growing as an influence and 
the fear of communist revolution was a factor in the British being willing to grant independence to India. But let's look at the Commonwealth period after independence when the UK, Canada, Australia and India are four separate countries. Members of the Commonwealth but four separate countries. Indian independence made no real difference to this trend because the Indian economy was still mainly a market economy. The old ruling classes hadn't been expropriated and during the next 20 years the lead of the Soviet Union over the territories of what had been the core of the British Empire became even more marked. So I don't see any need to revise my conclusion. From similar starting points in 1928, the USSR and the British Empire showed that socialist planning resulted in very much faster growth of living standards than a capitalist market economy was able to achieve.